Hi there and welcome to this short video which is unscripted about drum and bass mastering. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background about uh, my interest in drum and bass over the years and why I enjoy mastering drum and bass so much. It's one of my favourite genres to work with. So, my name's Barry Gardner and I'm a mastering engineer and I operate Safe and Sound Mastering. I grew up in East End of London and because of that there was a lot of pirate radio stations and I could tune in to the various types of music on those stations. And basically, I kind of caught the back end of Acid House music and grew up through the dance scene raving through the early hardcore days then through jungle and then through the more sort of tech steppy drum and bass when breaks were kind of slightly being left behind and I still enjoy drum and bass to this very day and I think what drew me to the sound of drum and bass was the very tightly played funk drums, of course, the break beats that were sampled for the genre, and the way that they were triggered via MIDI, sort of hard quantized, and that kind of produced a very unique type of groove where you had those sort of pitched up fast funk breaks essentially being triggered very sort of hard and sort of very well quantized. So it, it created something. Um, quite unique and a flavour that just worked absolutely spot on on the dance floor. Um, so that's my interest, I sort of worked producing some drum and bass tracks as well in my own studio at the time. So that's my kind of background but I'm going to go into the sort of technical stuff a bit and we're going to do a little tour of the studio as well just to show some of the equipment and uh, yeah we'll We'll start with that, I think. I mean, ultimately, um, we use quite a bit of analogue equipment at Safe and Sound Mastering, as you might imagine. Uh, this is a fairly clean analogue equaliser based on Sontec circuits. It's custom built, stereo ganged and switched throughout. Next, we have the Manly Massive Passive. That's a passive parallel equaliser and it's got a very sublime sound, it's tube based, it's got a tube amplifier in the back and then we have the Summit DCL200 compressor that's also a valve compressor uh, this is our studio level control which is essentially a laser trimmed resistor passive attenuator and this comes to and from our DAC which happens to be a benchmark DAC 1 HDR and last but not least we have the Ferris which is a very moo compressor a little bit different than typical uh, very moo compressors because it's quite fast so whilst very moo compressors they have a tendency to be quite slow um, they don't have particularly fast attack times not particularly fast release times. This can be fairly sprightly. In some instances it can be comparable to a, a VCA compressor but it has a much more euphonic tube and transformer signal path so it's capable of imparting its own sonic character much more so than a solid state standard VCA type compressor. So basically, whatever style of drum and bass you're into, whether it's liquid, minimal, rollers, or more sort of dark and heavy stuff, I'm confident that I can get your track sitting with the very best that's out there. I mean, a few words about perceived volume, because that's an obvious um, topic of discussion that comes up on, on occasion. I mean, ultimately, with drum and bass, if you, if you want high volumes, what we try to do is achieve those without too much sacrifice to the punch and the bass weight. Of course, both of those things being very important for the genre, but you know we have to balance that against perceived volume. Secondly, um, we have to consider 
the low end and in terms of how that's going to work so I know you guys tend to like your bass channel and the sub bass channel as well obviously we have kind of mid bass things going on and then you might have something that's a bit more sine like or 808 like uh, in, the, in the deep subs so the balance of those two aspects is very important in drum and bass and in fact because I know that a lot of people do have uh, issues with getting the bass balance right in their tracks it's good that we actually provide a, um, a free mix appraisal so if you're not certain about things when it comes to the, the bass I'm more than happy to just sort of lend an ear over it and suggest any adjustments that you might need which might enhance the mastering because in mastering we can do a lot but uh, sometimes it's better to tweak the mix down uh, because you know getting getting the bottom end right is is critical and if that can be improved in the mix then I'm more than happy to listen to that over advise some tweaks in the form of EQs normally and uh, we can take it from there and try and get you know the ultimate end result for you so uh, I think that's a service that people really appreciate when it comes to mastering because that feedback can make a big difference rather than just you sending something over and me pushing ahead with it you know I want the best results for you you want the best results for you and that's what we should be working for because it reflects on me as well so you know we, we aim to get things uh, as good as they possibly can exactly like what it should be um, yeah ultimately we have the right equipment here to do the job we don't use a set of uh, near field speakers alone although I do have a set of near field speakers amongst other speakers I've got Dynaudio BM6 speakers uh, as well as the PMC IB1S but for now we're just going to pop over to this side and uh, here we have our DAC1 HDR. The benchmark DAC1 HDR, the HDR is an upgrade from the standard DAC1 and in a nutshell it sounds better and the main reason for that is because the output operational op amps are National Electronics LM4562. You can even check them out on the internet. They're basically an audio audiophile um, op amp and I've used them in numerous sort of electrical uh, upgrades that I've done on various equipment over the years and they're, they're just about the best op amp you can get for audio absolute detail clarity and accuracy and the implementation in this particular DAC is absolutely spot on so that's what we're using for our DAC at the studio so probably a bit boring this for most people because you, you've probably got this kind of stuff in, in your own machine and you're looking for the analog stuff but all importantly we still use uh, good quality plugins at safe and sound simply because um, we need to in order to affect more surgical changes um, we're using Nuendo for playback and capture as you can see here Nuendo is basically like Cubase but it's just a slightly more snazzy version of it and these are the plugins that might find their way onto your tracks. I mean, this is the EMI Abbey Road TG12412 plugin, and we have here the DMG Audio Equilibrium software as well. And of course, most importantly, we better check check the monitoring out because uh, that's very important. So. Here, just on the right hand side, you can see one of the PMC IB1s and these are large format speakers, very accurate, almost full range, they go down to 25 hertz, so I can really hear what's happening um, in the bass area, well, I can hear across the entire spectrum as well as you might imagine, but the bass is, is all important for drum and bass, as, as I'm sure you're aware. Above that we've got an Aura Tone speaker, it's not really used in mastering, that's just um, as a mid-range sort of second check kind of speaker because things, if things are getting cluttered or harsh in the mid-range sometimes that's useful just to isolate the mids 
using a single driver speaker. Behind that you can see that we've got a, uh, a base trap that goes floor to ceiling. There's actually five or six of those of similar size. Um, we've got serious base traps in this studio and you need that in order to make the uh, low end of the studio much more linear because otherwise you can't judge what's going on essentially. So this is the side wall uh, which is also absor absorptive. Then above that we have diffusion up to the ceiling and we've got some what I call above that. They're actually mid-range traps, I'm not even going to bother showing them. They're foam traps and they really only trap lower base, uh, sorry, lower mid base or mid base rather than the deep lows because um, foam doesn't extend that well in terms of its uh, acoustic coefficient and if we pan across here I'm sorry the decor isn't great but you know this this is built for a function not not to look good we've got more diffusion as necessary for room measurements and this is in essence a, a massive henge base trap that you can see there so it's very important to try and get a uh, a linear low end to be able to make decisions for mastering because otherwise you have no base reference point from which to make decisions uh, and make adjustments with the nice equipment. So I think you know um, this just about covers the studio aspect and uh, hopefully this will inspire you to work with the studio. As I say um, if you want to work with me it's best contact me via email or by telephone and you can contact me um, using the email address safeandsound123 at googlemail.com or my telephone number is 07810271371 that's 07810271371 I think that just about sums things up for the drum and bass mastering video. So please do get in contact and I look forward to hearing your music and working with you soon. Thanks for watching this video. Cheers. Bye bye.